hello and welcome to our Gold Participants for Around the World. I'm Fiona Langsharp, IBCLC Public Relations Manager and MC for Gold Learning. I have the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Stuart Fishbein today and he is going to be presenting at our Gold Midwifery Conference coming up in our add-on package. Now he's going to be presenting on the home breach option, proper selection and technique. Well welcome Stuart, it's great to have you here today. Well, thank you, Fiona, from rainy Southern California. Oh, yes, lots of rain happening there, and uh, I'm hoping that it's uh, not too many floods for you right now. No, so. still better than most of the country and most of your country, Good. too. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for being here today, and I just wanted to uh, introduce you to our, our audience out there. I'm so excited about this topic, as I know you are very passionate about uh, the breach option. But first of all, I'd love it if you could introduce uh, yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about your practice and what you do there in Southern California. Sure, I'd be happy to. My practice began like any other doctor's practice generally begins after finishing residency. Uh, I trained here in Southern California at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I was fortunate at that time uh, to also rotate through LA County USC Medical Center, which at that point in the, in the early 80s was the busiest hospital in the country. They were doing about 22,000 births a year, which meant, means about 65 births a day. Wow. It was entirely resident run, so we got exposed to pretty much everything. And, and I'm grateful for that because that sort of training has essentially disappeared. But it gave me the uh, ability to do breach deliveries, forcep deliveries, twin, re twin deliveries, breach extractions, versions, um, all kinds of things that, that are sort of being um, lost in the current residency training program. And I practiced that way in my private practice, although I was much more medical. Clearly, I was medically trained, and therefore, I thought that technology was the greatest thing. And that's how I practiced. Until I began working with midwives, uh, I was approached early in my practice by midwives to become a backup physician or a supportive physician and answering questions and taking transports. And I slowly but surely began to see a different way of doing things. And about, well, I would say 10 years after I began practicing, I opened up a collaborative midwifery uh, doctor practice uh, in Ventura County, California. And that's when my metamorphosis really began. And I really began to see that most of what I had learned as a resident did not apply to normal birth and since about 85% 80, of women in labor are normal, I, very, I knew very little about 85% of people that were in labor. Uh, midwives knew a lot more about that than I did and so I began to evolve my practice and uh, we had really good statistics and we um, were continuing to do the things that I knew how to do uh, but with the, with the model by which midwives cared for patients including the prenatal model where visits were longer and we spent more time with preventative care and nutrition and stress reduction, things that are really not spoken about with um, in the residency programs that, that most of us went through at that time. I don't think there's been a lot of change in that. The problem, of course, began, uh, the conflicts began when um, the things we were doing didn't jive with what the hospital administration or the other people in the OB department or even more so the anesthesia or pediatric departments of the hospital I was working at didn't really like very much and they began to make it more difficult for us to do the things and I think everybody who's going to tune into your conference today knows what I'm talking about sure. and how things in the hospital are certainly much more rigid and always and not necessarily evidence-based and not necessarily ethical um, but they have it's their football they get to decide what to do right and so we became it became conflicted and that's um, when I began to decide uh, that this conflict wasn't going to be resolved in my favor and I started to look elsewhere and I was fortunate that midwives had given me the skills and the opportunity to collaborate and I began to do out of hospital birthing. Well and of course that's fantastic and, and you're right I mean uh, for some of our audience uh, tuning in of course they'll understand and know some of that but first of all you know thank you uh, for being open I think that uh, you know open to the suggestion that there is a, an alternate way to give birth uh, open to just wanting to learn more because I think sometimes that's what it boils down to is just being a little bit it's that closed mindedness that happens as well and we know there's some fantastic practitioners out there that we want to read 
reach um, and uh, we want to be able to you know have them be in that collaborative and what a great opportunity too for those mothers in your community to have a, a sort of collaborative care because uh, then you're you're reaching so many more and beyond sort of just normal birth but birth where there might be some complications but still having uh, collaborative care uh, is a much gentler way um, that I've seen over my years anyways to give birth as well when when everyone's sort of working together to for the same same goal tell me a little bit about uh, over the years that you have practiced I know there's probably been some highs and lows uh, in your discoveries and what you've learned and just how you've pushed forward in this area so maybe you can tell me some of the greatest moments that you sort of reached uh, in in this journey that you've been on well, I think the greatest discovery I might have already mentioned before is that basically uh, most of what I learned in training was not, practic uh, not practically applied to most of the women who are laboring and that midwives actually have a much better grasp and that midwifery is not a subset of obstetrics. Midwifery is its own special profession. Um, my colleagues believe that, uh, you know, OBs know best and that they should control what midwifery does. Um, I think that's a mistake. Uh, I think it's sort of... Uh, um, paternalistic and uh, economically motivated, I believe. So that's sort of something that I've discovered over the years. Also, the joy of what I do. I don't know that there is very many happy obstetricians. Uh, other than the bad scheduling that I have, being a home birth obstetrician <laughs> in pretty much solo practice, you know, I get great joy from the type of care that I can give. I give people you know, 30 to 60 minutes for a prenatal visit. And when I'm at their home, I, we become part of their life. And um, the rewards are great. And I think that in order to continue doing this sort of thing, because of the strain it puts on your body and your, and your mind and the stress that's involved, you have to have some joy involved as well. And I think that um, allowing these people to have choices and that are both ethically and evidence-based um, gives me you know that that's been the, one of the greatest things for me is is when I'm sitting after a birth in the corner of the room maybe filling out some paperwork and just watching the mother and the father sitting in bed skin to skin with their kid realizing that if this had been done in the hospital that baby might be in the NICU or mother would have had an IV she'd have been flat on her back she wouldn't have been able to eat anything all the things that hospitals often do that are um, no, you know, again, it's sort of the long habit of doing something and not and not one and never, never no one ever questioning why they're doing it that way. It would be like immediate cord clamping or or prepping a woman's vagina with iodine prior to a vaginal birth or or separating the baby from the mother. I mean, these things are done routinely in hospitals, and and if you ask somebody why they're doing it, they they will really stutter for a while. They really really won't know the answer. So you know, I've been fortunate, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to bring these inf this information out in a forum it requires a lot of energy on my part and you know as you get older you sort of want help and uh, one of the best things that could ever happen to me would be to find another physician or more who would be willing to do what I'm doing and, and set up a whole group here in yes. Southern California that does it. Yeah absolutely well I, I think there's many people listening right now who just want to uh, duplicate you or clone you um, and take you to their community um, because I certainly yeah, you I get know, that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm going to rename you the happy obstetrician. I love that. So because it's too, you're happy in your work, and it you know it's obviously very fulfilling for you because you you know I think uh, to me it's it's about giving hope uh, in this in this world of birth today where there's a lot of negativity, a lot of fear mongering around uh, you know twin and, and and breach delivery, and so you know it's great to have you out there, and and I mean that's partly why of course you're here at Gold too is to spread some of this really really great stuff um, so that we can keep getting that information that accurate evidence evidence based information out there well lastly uh, Stuart can I just ask you without giving too much away what what are you really hoping or what are you wanting the delegates to get out of your presentation well I don't expect that people are going to watch my presentation and then go out and do a breach delivery but I want them basically to have uh, honest information so that they can assist their clients in counseling um, and give them options uh, when people come to them and say, you know, my doctor says I need this, and they can say, well, you know, there is evidence to the other side, and why don't you speak to your doctor about that possibility, and if that doctor isn't capable of doing that, um, 
maybe suggest that you get a second opinion with somebody else uh, who is capable so that people can then make an informed decision because you know the old standard state tr statement is you can't make an informed decision if you don't have the information and unfortunately in most doctor's offices across the country you're getting skewed counseling and you're not getting honesty so I'm trying to present um, the, uh, the other side of the argument while, while being respectful for the fact that, that statistics can be skewed on either side. So take that into account. We're going to talk a lot about um, relative risk versus absolute risk and, the, sure. and, the, and how to read a scientific paper and when we discuss our, our talk coming up. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Dr. Stuart Fishbein for being with me here today and sitting down and just chatting about what's coming up here at the, the Gold Midwifery Online Conference for our add-on package. Just fantastic. We'll look forward to having all of you join us. And thank you again, Stuart, for being here today. You're welcome, Fiona. It's a pleasure. And thank you for tuning in, everyone. That's all for now.